Hey guys, Anthony Forby Four Diesel. Just a quick video, maybe. Oh, I just wanted to say that because I haven't said it for a while, right? <laughs> just a quick video. Look, it is probably going to be a quick one. It's a little bit about uh, what um, I suppose um, scan tool or diagnostic tool that we can use in the vehicle that also has handy information. At the moment we've got the uh, scan gauge and the Hilux. We had one of those in this vehicle originally. You know, you can see the Velcro there. I don't, I'm not recommending them. I don't like them for a number of reasons. And I'll give you an example. So there's, although you can program it to get the transmission temperature, that's a positive for this vehicle and the Hilux and also the 2009 Prado we recently used the scan gauge on for a while. Um, you can't do that with this Auto Fix 3210 but there's a few positives here. What I like about the 3210A, I haven't got this ugly antique thing with a lead hanging off it. There's no lead, you know. Um, basically, it's just bang. You've got the little Bluetooth dongle, what do you call it, connected in the uh, in the vehicle there. So let's just have a quick look at some of these readings. Engine coolant temp. I've mentioned before in other videos, in our 120 Prado, New thermostat went in at about two and a half years ago, and ever since then, it idles two degrees higher than it should, temperature. So idle temperature on these, it's not a big deal, but it should be 83. You might see 84 if your radiator's a bit blocked or it's a really hot day. I mean, you know, once you're sitting settled like this, we see a lot of these, and I'm gonna say 99% plus percent of the time when everything's working normal, 83 degrees is what you're gonna see at idle on your average even warm day with a vehicle that's working in pretty good condition. 84 is okay and 85 is okay as well. As long as the thermostat's working correctly the rest of the time, which this one is. So it's just, think of it, it's got a head start. It's a, it's a couple of degrees warmer than it should be. It could even be a variation with a temperature sensor, who knows. Uh, but as long as when you're driving and you know drive using the vehicle, like I don't see more than you know, commons 84, obviously 86, 87's common, 88's less common, 89. You know, we're getting into hot days when you're working it harder, because up to 90 is the normal operating range. We've mentioned that before in older videos. Doesn't mean over 90 is the end of the world or anything like that, but the normal operating range the engine was designed for is 75 to 90 degrees. Okay, so there's a little bit of interesting info for you. See this one, we've got EGR percentage, right? So at the moment, the EGR valve's 87% open now. When we get into the gas, I'll just give it a quick stab. Notice when we gas it, the EGR position goes to zero. So that, that means it's closed, it's getting all cold, filtered air, because that's what the engine works best on, and that's what happens anyway, right? So we know that's what works best. So right now, 87% open, doesn't really, just because it's that percentage open, it doesn't tell you how much it's getting, but I can tell you normally they'd be getting a whole gut full of crap, which we've discussed in other videos. So 87, that's what it's sitting at at the moment. It will vary depending how new the vehicle is, how blocked up your intake is. Um, it could be sitting on higher or lower percentages, but you know, with everything clean and you know, maybe some, you're gonna see something like that, okay. Now, so we, as you, the more you accelerate, and this isn't gonna work well, but I'll try to give an example. As you get into it, the more and more you get into it, the lower that percentage is gonna to go till it goes to zero. Once you get to a certain load and throttle position, it's gonna to go to zero. Okay, so when it goes to zero, that's awesome. That's really where you want it to be. You want it to be on zero. That's great, you know, just be on zero. Right there on 87. Now, did you notice it goes to 100 as well? Let's do it again on the gas, off the gas. As soon as we go off the gas, 100%, EGR valve opens 100%, so the boost pressure can dissipate, goes backwards through the EGR valve, backwards through the EGR cooler out the other way. Probably have some more detail of that in another video, so subscribe, turn the bell on for when we do that explanation. It's a matter of next time we've got the EGR cooler off the vehicle, uh, which doesn't happen that often, and when we've got time to explain it. So we'll get one, we'll have it off, we'll clean it all up, we'll make sure it's working right, and we'll try and go through all the explanations. Okay, what else we got here? Map. What I like about the Autofix 3210, although this is looking, you know, it's not looking like what it was before. It depends what, I suppose, what altitude you're at and temperatures and a few things like that. But quite often you're going to see a map reading of about 94, you might see 95, and you might see readings like this. I notice when people set the scan gauges up with a map reading in KPA, they 
they often give a reading in the 70s or something, which is wrong. Another reason I don't like scan gauges, besides looking like that old antique sort of, you know, it just it looks like rubbish. And it's expensive, mate, 250 bucks. So it only displays four things in analog. Uh, it's just not exciting, right? Now, yes, I really do wish that this Autofix 3210 had the transmission temp. And I wish we could program, manually program the PIDs in there like we do with a scan gauge. That would be just great. But look, the point is it gives you the correct map reading. And um, generally, you're going to see anything from there up to about 200 kPa with a 1KD, you know. So thereabouts, ballpark. You might have to Google the difference between kPa and PSI and all that sort of thing. But, you know normal driving you know highway speed you're going to see probably around the 170 quite often the math reading this is an important one because the normal math reading is meant to be sort of well i don't know if we go too much into too much detail actually the normal the math reading you're going to see if you're listening to my guidance and doing what works for many many people what works right you're going to see about the 13 mark if you've got a clean air filter when your e valve goes on zero, I'll just give it a quick rev again and so you can take notice. Now, the whole reading of the map's gonna go up, so this probably isn't gonna work out actually, but let's do it anyway. Yeah, no, it's not really helping you. So look, every now and then randomly these vehicles, they shut the e valve, okay? And then when that happens, you've got more air going past your map. When it's completely shut, the e valve, you're gonna see around 16, 17, 18, at the math reading okay and that's a very accurate reading that 13 there and that's what this video is about i just wanted to go through and say all these readings are very accurate the other one the load percentage right oh right so load as i said on a 1kd and a 120 prado that type of injectors that all the 120s have got with the most popular five speed auto that's behind the the 1kd in the 120 if it's automatically automatic not automatically the readings you're going to get with good injectors is exactly what you're looking at, at here. These injectors are only about two and a half years old, so you're going to see readings. Look at them, yeah, they're as good as new, aren't they? So if you look after things, the right maintenance, this is the sort of thing you're going to see. You might see 11, you might see 12, that's okay. We've been through that before. Once you start to see on a 120 readings like uh, 15, 14, 15 there, that's when you need to plug in another scan tool and go, hey, what's going on? And you should, probably should do that once every year or two anyway. And of course, you've got the vehicle speed there. It's a lot more accurate than looking at this thing here, to be quite honest. or well, that thing over there, do you know what I mean? So um, it's a good way to know your speed. So you can have six things up on the screen. That's my choice on the 3210. And I suppose the video was about these are very accurate readings. The map reading's accurate. It's not like what you can get out of the scan gauge. Um, I wouldn't bother using the scan gauge for boost or map it, for whatever reason. I'm not getting into it I'm not the election. I'm not the scan gauge person, whatever. I'm just telling you generally So put it in the comments if you've got a scan gauge and you find that yeah the map reading Whether it's called map or boost or PSI or KPA, whatever if you find what I find and uh, Yeah, it reads low and it also, you'll, the maximum boost you'll see in PSI is about 12 PSI generally. So let us know in the comments if that's what you're finding. On the 3210 here, Autofix 3210. If you want one, Autofix Australia with a PH, not an F. You know, like Philip, Autofix Australia. Um, Trevor Ryan from Dirt Ride 4x4, here's your man if you want to get one of those. Um, there, I think there's even an Oz Proto Crew, ongoing Oz Proto Crew discount. I'm not sure if, have a look on his website any dramas just hit him up on messenger he loves to get hit up on messenger i don't use messenger trevor ryan loves it okay so coolant temperature awesome that's accurate um ejar position that's awesome and accurate the map awesome and accurate the math awesome and accurate same with the load and the speed now one of the important ones the reason the other reason i thought i'd do a quick video see quick video it's going to be about 10 minutes i'm nearly done is I've mentioned in other, at other times that we're having an issue where we get our engine light and P0400 regular problem on this vehicle for years. And I don't mind if it comes on every few thousand Ks because it's telling me that, you know, things are working really well. That's what I want, mate. Zero, you know, clean. But so what we see every now and then we get that, but I've been mon I've been using this app to monitor the EGR position, right? The percentage is kind of like the position, right? Um, 86 87 when you're driving it's whatever 
but quite often, obviously when you back off it goes to 100, but it sits on 100 a lot, and it also goes to zero a lot. And I don't mean when I'm accelerating, I'm off the gas or I'm driving stop stator and it's on zero for ages. So I'm trying to see what position that valve's at when the engine light comes up, which obviously isn't up at the moment, but when it comes up, so I'm trying to work out, because we've checked over the years, one thing at a time, we've either cleaned, adjusted, or replaced, or made changes on one component at a time. And what's happened over the years, it's just got worse, slowly got worse. So there's obviously some wear and tear in one of the components, at least one, I'm not sure which one it is yet, because this is very rare, we don't see this I'm lucky enough to have dramas. It's always our own vehicles we have these sorts of dramas, which is awesome, because best it happens to me. Uh, so I'll let you know more in another video once we know. We're going to do some swap Gnostics eventually when we get some time. Just wanted to show you this thing. The readings are accurate. We're using it as a diagnostic tool there slightly as well, keeping on that EJR position or percentage, which you can see at the moment it's working really well. So they're the readings I generally have up. The other one you can have up is battery voltage. But for about six bucks, I've got it down there, right? See, 14 volts, happy days. So I don't need to have it up here because that's handy to know. Although you probably know we replaced the alternator on this because we had that funny little issue uh, only once. But gee, when was that? That was last year. Now, geez, time flies, doesn't it? You got to watch this. I'm not going to say it's CO, I do stuff, you know, time just flies by, guys. Um, got to get back onto those trips day trips, weekend trips, stay tuned on our other YouTube channel, on our Facebook groups, because I'm going to put a couple of trips up for you. Thanks for watching, subscribe, turn the bell on, hit the like button if you learned something out of that, and hit up Trevor Ryan, Dirt Road 4x4, because I reckon he could probably uh, do with some of your support in these tough times of business. Thank you very much, see you guys.